Hello everyone. Welcome back to Film Recap. In this video, I will show you a psycho thriller film from 2017, titled Downrange. Before we get to the storyline, don't forget to like and subscribe for more film recaps. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. At the beginning of the film, we see a car full of six friends encountering a tire burst in the middle of the road. The car swayed at high speed, causing a head impact for one of the women. This group of friends consist of the three women and three men. The woman in the pink outfit is Sarah, the one with the green jacket is Karen, and the one who hit her head is Jody. For guys, it consists of a guy in a blue shirt, Jeff, a guy in a gray shirt, Todd, and his friend in a white shirt, Eric. The point is that they all want to go to Jody's sister's birthday, which will be celebrated in a remote town. So remote that the number of cars that pass through this route in a month can be counted. At first all went well and nothing suspicious at all. Todd as a car owner plans to replace the car tire with a spare tire. Furthermore, they have three males, which of course it's not a complicated thing. Even in this situation, Sarah still wants to take a selfies to post statuses on her social media. However, because to the remoteness of the location, obtaining the proper signal is quite challenging. Out of curiosity, Karen walked in the opposite way for three meters and her signal was just detected at that point. Jody and Karen took cover behind the car a few minutes later because the weather had become too hot. Eric, on the other hand, wanted to pee and headed directly to the bushes. Todd, the car's owner, was too busy with Sarah and let Jeff change the tires himself. Jeff, who soon succeeded in changing the car's tires, was hindered by a slightly downhill position and made his car tires roll. As he picked up the tire, Jeff accidentally saw a bullet in the middle of the road. On the other hand, his friends were busy chatting and the other one was relieved to pee. In the middle of the conversation, Todd noticed his car's rolling tires and chased it down the street. At the same time, Sarah intends to see the condition of the tires that has been replaced by Jeff. But she was immediately shocked when he saw Jeff had died horribly. She was so surprised that she remained silent without saying a word. Todd who took the tire was still not aware that something was wrong here. Unfortunately, in such a short time, Sarah was hit by a shot from nowhere. Karen and Jody are also still not aware that they are being pursued by a threat. At that moment, Sarah's eyeball had been pierced by a bullet and at that very moment, she was hit by another shot. From there, Karen saw the situation around her and she didn't know where the bullets had come from. Without any delay, she immediately shouted and told her friends to take cover behind the car. Todd, who was still unaware, was not alert and was shot in his left shoulder. Meanwhile, Eric, who did not have time to approach the car, had to take cover behind a tree trunk. They were being shot at non-stop and could only take cover behind the car. Nobody expected the tire burst moment would turn into a disaster. It was clear that the blown tire was caused by a trap set by the shooter. An hour later, they began to be confused in their entrapment. Karen, who is the son of a military family, assumed that the shooter had used a silencer to keep his shots from loud noises. In addition, the bullet that could not penetrate the car indicated that the person's position was quite far from their position. Todd's left shoulder had been shot, leaving him weak and unable to move much. Even worse, Eric could only stay behind a tree trunk and hope for a miracle. Come to think of it, the tires that Jeff replaced were actually already installed, and all they had to do was tighten the bolts. But, it's not possible to do it, they had to find another plan to get out of here alive. Not long after that, Karen said that in the opposite direction which was 3 meters away, she still got a signal on her cell phone at that position. Then, Todd who tried to extend his hand was immediately given a stick by Jody from her pocket. Before that, Karen also set up the Google Assistant to immediately call 911 if there was a signal. Without hesitation, Todd immediately pointed the phone and got a signal. Unfortunately, the moment Karen just screamed to call 911, the cell phone was shot by that long-distance psychopath. The second way, Todd plans to make the car's gear into neutral, so that the car can be pushed back to a position that gets a signal. They set up a formation where Jody was on standby in the front position to record the source of the shots, while Karen was in the rear holding a fake scarecrow. Todd will try to open the car door and shift the gears into neutral. At that moment, the scarecrow were shot then Todd got into the car while trying to attach the keys. But due to being shot continuously, 
He needed to hide first and didn't have time to change the gear to neutral. The good news is that Jody was able to track down the source of the shot, and it was discovered that the gunman was hiding in a tree. It was obvious that someone with a sniper was hiding in that tree. What this person means is also unclear. But what is clear, he's already in that tree of course for such a long time. Then, Todd who's still not able to change the gear into neutral, tried to find protective equipment. Luckily, he saw his toolbox in the back of the car, and at that moment he was determined to take the box. Todd who managed to get the toolbox immediately made the iron cover as a hand protector. On the other hand, Eric could only surrender and did not know the plans of his friends. After that, Todd who had put a shield on his hand, immediately ordered Karen and Jody to take positions. In such a short time, Todd immediately got into the car, and managed to set the car's gear to neutral. Unfortunately, he had to be hit by a shot in the hand, then the car moved downhill immediately. Karen and Jody, can't do much but still try as much as possible to hold the car. It was so difficult to hold the car, causing Jody's grip was released and made her bounce until she left the car. In the end, the tires of the car that had not been bolted on, were directly shot and made the car stop. At that moment, Karen realized that this was the right time for Jody to run from there, because the shooter was reloading his bullets. At the same time, Eric tried to escape from his position but he was shot before Jody. Well, as a result, Eric couldn't go anywhere else with the condition of his legs that had been shot on both of them. With such conditions, Eric should have been shot to death. However, the shooter deliberately let Eric suffer until he bleeds out. An hour later, Todd noticed a bottle of water still left in the car seat. Even though they are all thirsty, they try to share as much as possible in difficult situations like that. Eric, who was just about to take a sip of water, was shot in the hand and suffered even more. In fact, that long-distance psychopath is also human who feel thirsty or hungry. Because she couldn't go anywhere else, Jody, who was desperate to pee, have no other option but to pee next to Karen. Then, Todd, who saw his girlfriend's body being eaten by a crow, couldn't accept it. He was determined to walk over to Sarah who had died in the middle of the road. But surprisingly, the mysterious shooter didn't shoot Todd. In fact, Todd still had time to kiss his girlfriend and hold her hand. On the other hand, Eric who was already dying, saw a wolf approaching him. If it's like this, Eric immediately surrenders because the wolf will devour himself alive. Meanwhile, Todd, who challenged the shooter, accidentally saw a passing car from a distance. Of course this is a rare occurrence with such a small chance. Unfortunately, Todd was shot at that point, causing the wolf not to eat Eric. Todd had no choice but to die right there in front of his girlfriend's body. At that moment, the car's driver saw Karen and Jody waving. However, the woman's hand was shot, and the bullet went straight through her ring finger. As a result, blood splattered all over the place. It became even worse when the steering wheel became uncontrollable. Then, the car crashed into Todd's car that was in front of him and caused Jeff's head to fall off his body. As a result, Karen and Jody's only hope vanished in an instant. The woman who was driving the car started to wake up. However, not long after that, she was hit by several shots from the shooter. Here we can also see the man who tries to save his throne daughter. Karen and Jody keep yelling to him to stay cover behind the car. At a moment like this, Karen told the father to call 911. Apparently, the position of the father was already in an area that received signal coverage. The shooter who didn't know where the father was, started shooting at a car's tank until it leaked. In the end, the car exploded and there was no longer any protection for the father. You can see for yourself, Slowly the father had to die with the burning body. Meanwhile, across the street, the daughter was still awake with full of wounds. The moment she just woke up, the long-distance psychopath shot the daughter's head until it burst. From these few minutes, instead of getting better, Karen and Jody had to watch death after death which got worse. They are also confused about how to avoid that long-distance psychopath, even if the assistance car cannot cross this road. Until finally, Karen ultimately comes up with a plan, and the two of them must act once nightfall. Karen said that the shooter's sight would be more difficult when there was smoke at night. As night fell, the mysterious shooter continued to monitor the location and didn't miss a second. Then Karen, who was ready with a cutter, planned to tear some of the seats in the car. On the other hand, Jody took a bottle of gasoline, 
a bag containing clothes and a drink box that she found in the back trunk. Luckily, there were still two drinks in the box and they drank it immediately. After that, Jody took t-shirt after t-shirt that was in the bag, to be used as an emergency mask. Without a delay, Jody immediately poured a bottle of gasoline into the car seat, and Karen set fire to the newspaper with a lighter. In the end, the car started to catch fire and release smoke. However, the smoke still wasn't enough to give them a chance to escape. From the appearance of the smoke, the long-distance psychopath started to get annoyed, because his visibility was getting unclear. But suddenly, Karen saw a police car approaching their location. This indicates that the 911 call that the father called has been successfully connected and traced. In fact, the police also brought two snipers who were ready to spy on the shooter's presence. Then, the police who had just arrived, realized that the situation at this location was not good. Therefore, he asked the state police for additional assistance. But again, the jaw of his mouth was hit by a shot from that mysterious person right then and there. Unfortunately again, the policeman was lying in the position of driver's seat, and he accidentally stepped on the pedal of the car. From that opportunity, Karen immediately asked Jody to run, but Jody refused on because she still didn't have the courage. Like it or not, Karen had to run alone, and unfortunately the smoke was starting to thin out. At that moment, she was shot and died on the spot. Now the police who had been four had now become two people. At that time, Jody was determined to run to the police car which was not far away. At that moment, there was a shootout in which the mystery shooter was clearly better than the police. Then, Jody who had no other choice immediately took the police car. She planned to crash into the only tree that the shooter took as a cover. Amazingly, Jody managed to do this and made the shooter fall from the tree. Jody immediately woke up and tried to pick up the fallen rifle. Meanwhile, the shooter kept trying to cut the rope that tied him to the tree. From here, you can see for yourself the figure of a mysterious shooter. This person really didn't have anything to do anymore, and was on the tree waiting for the victim. In fact, throughout the film we're not told who he is actually. The urgency of this situation made Jody scared and rushed. At that moment, she shot the man many times until he died on the spot. Still not satisfied, it took Jody one more shot to shoot the mysterious man in the head. However, while reloading the bullet, the cock of the gun suddenly stuck. Like it or not, Jody then hit the man with the tip of the gun. Until his face was destroyed. Then, Jody saw some scratches on the rifle. You could say this line marks how many victims have been shot dead on this road. As a farewell, Jody wanted to hit the man on the head one more time, but unfortunately the gun cocked and shot Jody in the neck. It's really irritating to see this, if I may give a suggestion, it's better if the scene is cut when the shooter is dead. Well, after all, if you're going somewhere, figure out which road you'll be crossing. Okay guys, that's all the recap for this movie. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.